Ultimate has a lot of mechanics and details put into the game, so many that there might be some you've forgotten or may not have even known about. In this video, I'm going to give you 25 things you may not have known or have forgotten about Ultimate. I've done 3 videos like this already where I only give 5, so I'm combining those and adding 10 more giving you a definitive video for this topic. If you've seen my previous 3 videos and are just interested in seeing the 10 I've added, please skip to the time shown on the video. With all that being said, let's get started. When you grab the edge at higher percents, your invincibility runs out sooner. This is incredibly useful to know in both positions. If you're the person trapping the opponent on the edge, you can punish them for waiting too long to pick an option quicker. If you're the person on the edge, you know you'll most likely have to pick an option faster than normal. If you roll, air dodge, or spot dodge often in a short period of time, they will still, causing them to have less intangibility frames and more end lag. It's good to know when you have your opponent stuck in shield or trapped in the corner because you know roll and spot dodge become easier to react to. It's also a good reminder to cut down on doing these options in order not to stale them. Ultimate is the first game where both up smash and up out of shield can be done without jumping. This means these two options are significantly quicker and are usually your best tool to get a good punish or stop shield pressure. To me, people tend to forget more about the up smash out of shield aspect rather than the up B one, but both can be equally important depending on the character you use. Shield grabbing out of hit stun is 4 frames slower than a regular grab. This means trying to grab in order to punish shield pressure is usually not the best option. If you're able to get the grab, that's great, but don't rely heavily on it since there's a good chance your opponent is looking to punish you for it. Getting 2 frame can heavily change the time of the match depending on which side you're on, but there is a way for some characters to avoid getting 2 frame on their recovery, and that is by grabbing the edge from an upward angle. This is especially effective with teleport recovery since those are the ones that usually get 2 frame the easiest. I mentioned in one of my previous videos that the higher percent you have, the less invulnerability you have when grabbing the edge, but there's a way to get more invulnerability even at super high percents. The longer you stay in the air before grabbing the edge, the more invulnerability you'll get once you grab it. This is really good for characters who can stall the recovery since it will give them more time to wait at the edge before picking an option. This one I actually didn't know until recently and I think it'll help a lot of people. You can automatically short hop by pressing two jump buttons. This is very useful for people who struggle to short hop consistently and don't want to do a short hop immediate aerial all the time. I wasn't able to get this to work with tap jump, so I think it only works with button inputs. Sorry tap jump users. If you get hit, you'll be unable to grab the edge for a certain number of frames. The situation doesn't come up super often, but it does happen. I'd say it's pretty useful for some projectile characters in situations where they can't get to their opponent in time and want to try and keep them in a bad spot. So this has been a thing since Brawl I think? but I'm pretty sure not a lot of people know about this. You can cancel your fastfall with an aerial. It's really good to know for going off stage since you can fastfall to quickly get to where your opponent is and then halt your fall speed to attack them. This option makes going off stage far less risky than it would seem. It's also a great trick to use when jumping into the opponent since it will throw off their timing. There's an indicator that shows you what direction someone will go after being hit. It's a good way to see how someone is dying an attack and can make it easier to react to certain combos. It also shows up during the critical hit screen, so it makes it easier to figure out whether or not someone DI'd that hit that's going to kill them properly. This is something even I forget. An exclusive to Smash Ultimate is being able to tech footstools. Remember this so you avoid getting hit by jab resets and other untrue follow-ups. If you shield while holding special or another shield button, it prevents you from jumping, spot dodging, or rolling. This is great to use while angling your shield in order to prevent misinputting one of those options. So this has actually been around since Brawl, but still something a lot of people forget or may not even know. You have a bigger range to grab the edge when you're facing it than when your back is towards it. I'm sure there have been a lot of moments where you missed the edge while recovering and wondered what it was. There's a good chance it was probably that. 
You can only grab the edge six times in a row without being hit or touching the ground. After the seventh attempt, it will show you a visual that happens when you grab the edge, but instead of holding onto it, you will fall. Short hop aerials do 15% less damage than full hop ones. This very slightly affects knockback as well, so in situations where you have the choice to hit with a short hop or full hop aerial, you should definitely pick the latter. There's an indicator for when you're about to break out of grabs or being buried. Right before you're about to break out, you will start blinking yellow. This is good to know because there are moments where you might input something you didn't want because you were still mashing. But if you know you're about to break out, you can slow down your mashing and make misinputting something less likely to happen. Also, since number 17 also involves the yellow blinking, I'm just going to say it here too. After someone's been grabbed, they will be blinking, meaning you can't grab them again, and won't stop blinking until you can. You cannot shield during your initial dash. This is good to know because you can punish people who tend to foxtrot a lot for doing it. This also means that characters who have a long initial dash are more punishable since they travel a further distance. Which makes having a long initial dash more of a double-edged sword. I feel like a lot of people still don't know what stick sensitivity does, so I'm going to tell you here. Stick sensitivity gives you an additional frame than normal to input smash attacks if you put it on high, and if it's put on low, it gives you one less frame than normal to input smash attacks, meaning you have an additional frame to input tilts. It's only a one frame difference, but if you feel like you misinput tilts and smash attacks a lot, try changing your stick sensitivity accordingly. If you're stuck in shield stun while shielding an attack, after the 11th hit, you can do a completely invulnerable roll or spot dodge. This is especially good against characters who can rapid jab your shield, since you're basically getting a free punish. Gamer made a video that goes more into detail about it, so I will link it in the description if you want to know more. Everyone talks about auto-canceling aerials after a hitbox comes out, but I feel like people forget you can also auto-cancel before a move comes out as well. Believe it or not, auto-canceling before the aerial comes out can be very useful. When you're put into tumble in situations where if you air dodge, you'll tech, and you don't want to jump, you can throw out an aerial and auto-cancel it. There's also some characters like Ness and Diddy Kong who have moves that have a very large auto-cancel window, so they can bait opponents out into thinking they're going to throw out an attack and then do something else. There's a visual indicator that shows when you're in shield stun. When your shield gets hit, it will have a staticky visual that doesn't go away until after you're out of shield stun. This is really good to know because if your shield is getting pressured, you'll have a visual indicator to when you can actually act again. There seems to be an exception to this though, and it's if an attack makes you slide while you're in shield, then you have to wait until you stop sliding to act. There are untackables in Smash Ultimate, and they act differently than they did in 4. Depending on how much knockback you are in, when you hit a wall or floor, you will not be able to tech it. And usually it will be indicated by a red splash around where you collided. This is really good to know in situations where you can edge guard an opponent, because it makes stage spiking at higher percents less risky. You can buffer regular get up to avoid being trumped. Trumping in general isn't utilized nearly as much as it was in Smash 4, but when it does happen, it seems like people are still very used to not being able to avoid it with regular getup. Of course, all of your edge options can be punished, including ledge jump, but mixing up what you choose helps avoid that. And finally, we're on the last one. This is actually the thing I feel like most people forget when they're playing Ultimate, and that is to have fun. I bet there's some people out there who have never played World of Light, or even with items. They're so focused on the competitive aspect of Smash that they've forgotten how much enjoyment it can truly bring. And that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember to have fun. All right, I'll do an actual one. If you stay on the Angel platform longer than normal, you will have less invincibility when you drop down. This is exclusive to Ultimate and makes stalling on the platform less effective. This means as soon as you lose your stock, instead of waiting on the platform until it automatically drops, it might be better to just immediately drop down and utilize the maximum amount of invincibility you can. Okay, now that is really it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have anything that you think people don't know or often forget an ultimate that I didn't mention in here, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy my content and want to help support this channel, please like this video and subscribe. If you want to help support this channel even further, you can do so on my Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.